In this video, we're going to take a look at the current state of the comic book market and see if we're heading for a boom or a bust. Stay tuned. Bryce Comics. First off, if you're new here, we do at least one giveaway on this channel every single month, and this month is Thor 337 in a CGC 6.5. It's a new stand edition. It's pressable. I believe it could get about an 8.0. It's the first appearance of Beta Ray Bill. Subscribe to the channel, comment on this video, and like this video for your chance to win, and then head over to BryceComics.com and sign up for the newsletter if you haven't already. Every single month that you stay subscribed, you're entered to win a free slab, and this month is the first appearance of Jubilee. So I've done two market update videos so far, one when the market was absolutely booming and one six months later after we saw a market correction. And now it's been six months since then. And I think it's a great time we evaluate where we currently are and where we're headed. To sum up the last year and a half, we saw a huge boom in the comic book market around the end of 2020 and through the beginning of 2021, where absolutely everything was exploding in value. Then we saw a market correction of about 30% pretty much across the board and to see where we currently stand in the market I want to take a look at some current sales numbers of two types of books that I think show the current state of the market and that's non spec book keys and spec book keys so let's jump in the computer and take a look at some numbers all right so I want to start off with books here that I think have little speculative influence that are mostly influenced at least right now by the just the conditions of the comic book market and I think I think Alias number one is a good representation of that. Uh, this is the first appearance of Jessica Jones. She already had her show on Netflix, which is back around here around the 2015 time. That show came and went. And so all of the influences now, um, while it's still a good spec, there isn't anything in the news saying that she's coming imminently to the MCU. So um, I think most of the current influences on this, on this book are just the market. So here we can see the market boom, it peaked. We saw uh, the correction, it leveled off, and now we are trending back up. Another book that I think shows the general state of the market without a ton of spec potential is Iron Man number one from 1968. And there is some spec for this book because there's a tidbit in here about Madame Mask and we got her in the Hawkeye show on Disney Plus. But I don't think anyone's buying this book for the spec of Madame Mask. I think they're buying this book for the classic first solo series of Iron Man, the classic cover and just the general Iron Man nostalgia. So here we can see that this book saw the huge jump with the market boom. We saw a, a decent correction and now it's trending way back up. Another book that I think has little speculative value is Amazing Spider-Man number 28. This is the first appearance of Molten Man. It's a hard book to get in high grade because of an all black cover, but there isn't a ton of spec behind Molten Man. It's just a highly collectible Amazing Spider-Man book. So I think that this shows the strength of the market and just general market influences. Here we can see a, a healthy boom with the market boom, a decent correction, and now we are heading in the upward direction. Here's one more book with little speculative influence. We've got Amazing Spider-Man number 212, the first appearance of Hydro Man. And we saw a huge amount of activity when uh, there was speculation around a movie, but that has come and gone. And since then, you can see lots of ups and downs, but the general trend is up. So somewhere in here, you could probably account for by a market correction, but overall, it's just trending in the upward direction. And the last book with little speculative influence, I think a good example is Vampirella number one. And here we can see in the 6.0, a huge increase with the market boom. You could probably account for this by the correction, but it's possible it was just, you know, a little bit of a lower sale and now we're headed back up. I think it's also arguable to say that this book just never saw a correction. It's just highly collectible and it's still going up. So now I want to take a look at a couple books that I think show the strength of the spec market. And one of those books is Strange Academy number one. This is a fantastic spec. Anybody who's read this book and who's seen any Marvel content on the MCU at all knows that this is perfect material for an MCU related property. But there hasn't been any kind of news in the market to suggest that this is happening anytime soon. It's just a solid spec. And as we can see here, the last sale was $450 for a 9.8, the you know a record breaking high and trending in that upward direction. And here we have the Opena variant, the one in 50. And this book, the most recent sale was $1,755. 
it has seen no correction, only up. And this is, you know, a relatively new book. I believe it came out in 2020. So this to me shows the strength of the spec market. And another book that shows the strength of the spec market is War of the Realms, New Agents of Atlas, number one. First appearance of so many characters and the new Agents of Atlas team. And here we can see the one in 50 variant. We did see a correction uh, during the market correction and now it's back up with the most recent sale being $1,562 for a one in 50 variant of a book that came out in 2019. So I think it just shows the, the faith that people have in the series. I also think this is a fantastic spec um, and this book shows the strength of the spec market. Now, I'm not going to spend too much time on this because I know you've probably seen a ton of videos about these books that are just absolutely tanking because of unfavorable response to the spec associated with them in shows or movies. And we have Inter Eternals number one. Here you can see this book is actually still trending down with the most recent sale being $1,058, almost back down to pre movie announcement prices. Here we have Amazing Spider-Man 361, the first appearance of Carnage. As you can see, also trending down. It looks like it might possibly be trying to level off, um, but it's definitely not heading trending back up, I don't believe. I think if anything, it's going to level off. And then here we have Special Marvel Edition number 15, the first appearance of Shang-Chi. And here you can see in the 9-6, we, we definitely saw a correction since the movie came out, but the most recent sale is actually up. So that's super interesting for this high-grade copy of 9-6. We haven't seen um, a, a 9-8 come to market since January. Uh, you could see that it's really leveling off higher, but these higher grade copies of First Shang Chi seem to be doing better than the lower grade copies. Here you can see in a 9.4, it appears to be leveling off. Um, and here in a 9.2, um, it kind of seems like it's leveling off or still going down. So it seems like the higher grade copies are faring better for this book with Shang Chi. And these trends that we saw that we see here with these books, with you know. Uh, the show or movie not meeting expectations. This is totally par for the course with the MCU, with the spec market. This is nothing new. So as we can see from the deep dive into the numbers, books that have little speculative influence and are mostly influenced by market factors alone have in most cases started to go back up in value and at worst are leveling off since the correction. Books with good speculative value are continuing to log record-breaking sales, and books associated with speculative opportunities that did not meet expectations took a hard dip, a trend that has been true from the beginning. I think all of these signs combined indicate a healthy market. However, you need to be wise about what you're investing or speculating on. Now that we've talked about the data for current sales in the market, I want to quickly, really quickly cover the grail market and its immediate outlook because the grails lead the pack, so to speak, for the whole comic book market. And comic book grails have always been incredibly low in supply compared to demand. That's why prices are so incredibly high and rising. Hit that subscribe button and the notification bell for a future video that I'm going to drop soon that does a deep dive on the grail numbers and some recommendations. But for the sake of time, I'll say this. Every single comic book grail is trending up in price and it doesn't appear to be slowing down anytime soon. There are more investors in the market than ever before and they are competing with collectors that have always been hunting these grails that seem to be marching further and further out of reach creating a continued frenzy for these comic book grails. But like I said, stay tuned for a future video that covers that topic alone, because there's a lot of stuff to cover in, in just that one topic. So just what the hell caused the sudden boom in the comic book market in the first place? In my previous two market update videos, I talked about five factors that caused the comic book market to boom, and I wanna revisit each of them and see where we stand today and give some updates. So the first thing was the pandemic. Obviously the pandemic hit and caused Hollywood to go dark for a short period of time, causing a void in entertainment options that comics filled. Everybody was at home with nothing to do, and a lot of people turned back to their childhood love of comic books. And the end result of this is that we got a whole bunch of new collectors or collectors coming back into the hobby, readers and fans in this hobby. And the good news is that they're still here. One of the big wild cards was what would happen when COVID restrictions relax? Are all of these new hobbyists and readers going to 
jump ship and forget about comic books. And what I'm seeing is that they're still here and new ones are still coming in because this is the greatest hobby in the world. And once it gets its claws in you, you're not going back. And why would you want to? The second factor was comic cons went dark because of COVID causing a decrease in supply. And there was some thought that when cons came back, people were going to be able to buy keys again in person and off record, and that this could have a negative effect on record-breaking comic book sales. And I think it's safe to say that cons coming back in full effect has had little to no impact on the sale prices of comics. The vast majority of dealers are online these days, and the ones that only sell in person at cons set their prices based on online sales. So I think we can cross this off the list as a wild card. Number three and four was discretionary income had increased and in stimulus money from the government. So this was due to stimulus and unemployment money flowing in from the government and not as many things to spend it on like travel and restaurants. And this has almost completely flip-flopped. Stimulus money is dried up and travel has relaxed in a major way. So this flip-flopping is a big part of what caused the correction. But as we saw earlier from the numbers, we've come out of that and are back on the rise in most cases. So I think we need a little bit more time before we can cross this off the list completely as a concern, but we are definitely heading in the right direction. The fifth factor was lack of faith in the economy. The high uncertainty in the economy had stock market investors jumping ship and putting money into commodities like comic books. The stock market is always a roller coaster ride. It always has been, and it always will be. It's so volatile and reactive, and the uncertainty in the stock market is certainly still a major problem, especially with all of the major world events going on today. So I believe even more investors will be looking for alternative investments. And this is where the performance of comic books is looking better and better every day, especially since we weathered the storm of the correction and are still going up. I believe these factors are going to continue to push prices of grails into the stratosphere. Again, stay tuned for a future video with a grail market analysis. Make sure to hit that notification bell so you don't miss it. And the sixth thing here that I want to add is the growth of the MCU. This last point is what I believe to be the largest driving factor for the growth of the comic book market, and that's the growth of the MCU. When I first started doing market update videos, uh, the MCU on Disney Plus was brand new and it was unknown the effect that the Disney Plus shows would ha continue to have on the comic book market. And we now know that Disney Plus shows cause an absolute explosion in speculation. And if the show doesn't meet expectations, those speculations come crashing down, just like MCU films since the beginning. The MCU on Disney Plus is an extension of MCU films causing exponential growth. Now we don't have as long of waits in between films. They're continued in our living rooms. And the end result is an explosion in new fans and subsequently interest in the comics that represents the characters we all love on the screen. In one of my previous videos, I mentioned that a Spider-Man trailer on Marvel's YouTube page garnered a million views in the first hour. I was like really impressed with that. The most recent Doctor Strange film garnered 30 million views in the first hour, a 30x increase compared to just a few years ago. There is absolutely no reason to believe that this is going to change anytime soon. And there is every reason to believe that viewership and fandom in the MCU is going to continue to rise and in turn, the comic book market will as well because it's the driving force behind the secondary comic book market. Marvel has the MCU dialed in and they are doubling down. So now that we've talked about the current strong sales and have revisited what caused the market to boom in the first place, let's revisit what could cause the market to bust and see where we should stand and if we should be concerned. The first factor that I saw that could cause the market to bust was world economy uh, uncertainty and stock market uncertainty. In the past, anytime there was a stock market crash, the price of comics would go up. Uncertainty in the economy often causes people to turn to commodities like comics. We've seen lots of uncertainty in the past decades and effect on comics always seems to be positive. Number two, 
COVID could cause more shutdowns. I saw this as a potential threat to the comic book secondary market. In the past, when I did these market update videos, it really was unknown about what would happen with new strains of COVID and things like that. But I think now it's safe to say that we figured out how to keep things running during this pandemic. And I don't think this poses a threat anymore. The third thing I saw was sentiment changing towards comics being seen as overvalued. And with all of the factors mentioned in this video, I truly don't see this as a threat anymore. With the onslaught of new collectors and investors and the exponential growth of the MCU, we have every reason to believe that the sentiment will continue to be positive for comic book grails, which lead the market for the secondary comic book market. So the last thing is the X factor, something none of us saw coming. And I'm very curious to know what you guys think. Leave a note down in the comments below. If you see any convincing reason why the sentiment for the price of comics would change and please no mindless we're in a bubble and everything's going to burst. I'm not interested in that. I'm interested in hearing concrete reasons why it would burst. I hope that this video was helpful. If it was, please consider hitting subscribe and leaving a comment down below. It will enter you to win that Thor 337 and a CGC 6.5 white page newsstand pressable edition, the first appearance of Beta Ray Bill. Head over to BriceComics.com and sign up for the newsletter to be entered to win a free slab every month. This month is X-Men 244 and a CGC 9.6 white pages, the first appearance of Jubilee. As always, thank you for sticking with me to the end of the video and we'll catch you in the next one. Bye. Rise Comics.